I want to discuss claims made um, about the Immigration Minister, Robert Jenrick. We've been in close contact with his office at the Home Office this morning uh, to try to get um, uh, more uh, clarity around it and uh, just to ask him whether it is true or not, uh, what's being levelled at him. Um, and in two separate statements, the latest has literally just dropped to us um, uh, there isn't an out-and-out -out denial that the thing I'm about to tell you uh, actually happened. Um, you interpret it your way. Obviously, I've interpreted it my way, and I'll share that with you and tell you why I've interpreted it that way. Um, but let me just tell you the story from the start, and I will, of course, read that Home Office uh, states, uh, spokesperson's statement that's just come in um, after we reached out to them. Enver Solomon this, we, uh, who's a relatively frequent guest on the programme, CEO of the Refugee Council, uh, said uh, at a gathering that Mr Jenrick, Robert Jenrick, the Immigration Minister, instructed staff as he visited uh, a Kent asylum intake unit, so a reception centre for asylum seekers in Kent earlier this year, instructed them to make it look less welcoming. There was a welcome sign and he wanted that taken down. But, but more, well, I think the kindest word I can find is oddly, I would go further and say it's quite sinister, but let's stick with odd, shall we, for now. Um, he gave the order or instructed, whether it's an order or an instruction, um, of staff there to remove pictures on the wall that were designed to reassure and calm child uh, asylum seekers, child refugees. He complained that the pictures designed for the children uh, should be painted over that this was a place of law enforcement and uh, it, it, need, it needed to be clear that it was a place of law, law enforcement and not a place uh, of welcome. Uh, Enver Solomon said, the immigration minister said, pictures of cartoons and animals should be removed and that staff should make sure that they are painted over, the pictures, as they give an impression of welcoming, which Mr Jenrick didn't want to show. Um, now, it seems to me that you can reassure a child or attempt to reassure a child and even their parent in the process of arriving at a Kent uh, asylum reception centre and still have a functioning system that may or may not give them asylum. You don't need to turn everything into um, the harshest of harsh experiences. These people have just got off a boat in the channel in many cases They've already had the harshest of harsh experiences. Um, and, and I think it. this is the same man who said that illegal immigrants, as he the term he used, um, were, what was it, cannibalising our compassion. And yesterday, just to broaden it out from Mr. Jenrick, and I'll read that statement in just a second. Um, in, in that meeting of the so-called New Conservatives yesterday, there was a term used that, again, read read between the lines on it, and it's pretty clear what they're talking about. Cultural security. Cultural security. Um, anyway, we reached out to the Home Office uh, to get a response to um, Enver's claims, uh, and this is what we were given, this statement. We do all we can to ensure children are safe, secure and supported as we urgently seek placements with a local authority for the children. All children receive a welfare interview on their arrival at accommodation, which includes questions designed to identify potential indicators of trafficking or safeguarding issues. It's good to know. Our priority is to stop the boats and disrupt the people smugglers. The government has gone further by introducing legislation which will ensure that those people arriving in the UK illegally are detained and promptly removed to their country of origin or a safe third country. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody had accused me of insisting children's paintings, or paintings for children, I'm not suggesting the children themselves have painted it, but paintings for children to reassure them on a wall of probably a prefabricated, you know, sort of building on the shores of Kent, um, that, that that was painted over to make it as un unwelcoming as possible. If somebody had accused me of that, I would either deny it if it were not true, um, and I would 
take serious action against the people saying it about me. Or I would explain why I thought it was important. And he's done neither. And his spokesperson at the Home Office has done neither. So I think we can safely conclude that it did happen, unless they'd like to send us another um, perhaps simpler statement saying whether it did or it didn't. So what you just got there was a reiteration of government policy. Um, and in a few minutes, I'll share with you, um, maybe after the break, I'll share with you uh, some experiences I had in a refugee camp in Jordan on the Syrian border with Jordan back in 2013, I think it was. Um, and the importance of, for children who are displaced, the importance of really quite small and simple things to help them psychologically and emotionally. The idea that even if you're ultimately going to say, I'm sorry to their mum and dad, you can't stay here, or I'm sorry, you can't stay here. We're going to help you get back to your own country or a different country. Even if you're going to say that, the idea that you can't in the meantime soothe them as children it just seems sinister to me. How does it seem to you? And, you know, we hear fine words. We'll hear them from Rishi Sunak later. The stuff he's written in, in The Sun, I think it was today. We can talk about it in relation to Just Stop Oil after three. Where he says, Just Stop Oil are ruining this and breaking that and destroying this and destroying the other. Well, we'll talk about what they're destroying and what they're breaking and what they're contravening uh, in a couple of hours, according to him. But what does this... I think this breaks something. I think the language coming out of the likes of Suella Bravham and Robert Jenrick and the New Conservatives yesterday. I think it breaks something in this country. I think it breaks what we say we are, which is largely speaking, you know, broadly speaking, uh, a country of decent people who, I mean, we're like any country, we've got our problems and we've got our problem people. And people who would harm children, clearly, we know children are harmed in this country. You know, it's not, it's no utopia for children, this country, by any means. But broadly speaking, we think of ourselves as decent, and we think of ourselves as decent and protective towards children, perhaps more than anything. Um, so where does this lie with all of that? And how long do we have to tolerate this degradation of who we are, I wonder? I, I don't know, it seems to me that let's see what happens if, if this goes to the Supreme Court. Uh, the question of the legality. Let's remind ourselves that the appeal court found that Rishi Sunak and the Conservatives' Rwanda plan, Rwanda policy, is unlawful, right? So as things stand, when asked about an alternative to that plan, all he has to say is Albania. And that is that is a red herring because it isn't connected to uh, what to do about people who might end up going to Rwanda because the people who have failed asylum in uh, from Albania are quickly sent back to Albania because it's regarded as a safe country. Um, not so if you're coming from a more dangerous place, say Afghanistan, for example. Um, so do you believe that... Do you believe that it's a real policy, this one, the Rwanda plan? Is it a real policy that they really thought, think even, they can implement that that it can come off i i don't think that i don't think they think it'll come off i mean you know if they win in the supreme court you can get me to eat my hat but i, I don't think i don't think they think it'll it'll be allowed at all it's showboating it's showboating it's posturing it's performative so what happens when it fails what then what will his answer be when you or i say but what about the 8,000, 10,000, 12,000 people who've come now? Are, are you processing them? No, not not quickly enough. Um, they and others are still waiting for months and months on end, years on end sometimes. What about those numbers? What about the fact that you keep saying stop the boats, we'll stop the boats, we'll stop the boats, but the boats are still coming. What else are you doing? What are you doing about the criminal gangs? What are you doing about them? What are you doing about creating a better policy with France on this? What are you doing about beefing up uh, the staffing of the Home Office and the immigration system more generally. Those are really good questions, I think, really good questions to ask him. I think his Rwanda plan can be painted over every bit as quickly as the cartoons in that immigration reception centre, if truth be told. And he certainly, that's what he'd like to do if it fails 
in the courts, just paint over it as though it never happened. But it happened. It is hap as in it's still in play. According to the prime minister, it's still in play.